This is a video for the positioning and planning of an MRCP examination. MRCP, or Magnetic Resonance Coley Pancreatography, takes images of the biliary system. After you've asked the patient to lie supine on the scanner table, give them ear protection, such as earplugs and headphones, along with an emergency buzzer. Place the body coil over the upper abdomen. Plug it in and strap it down on both sides. Make sure the equipment is securely fastened to minimise respiratory artefacts. Advanced MRI scanners are equipped with built-in table sensors that detect respiration. Proper patient positioning over the sensor is crucial for accurate respiratory gating and data acquisition. Other scanners may need additional external respiratory gating equipment, such as sensors, belts or bellows. Move the patient into the bore of the magnet and centre the laser beam localiser to the middle of the body coil. Now fully move the patient into the magnet, making sure they're calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Start the scan with a three-plane localiser. An MRCP examination can be performed using breath hold or non-breath hold sequences, depending on patient compliance. You can refer to MRIMaster.com for further guidance on this. In this protocol, we'll perform a mixture of breath hold and non-breath hold scans. In this example, the first sequence is a T2 Trufis breath hold coronal sequence. Plan the coronal sequence on the axial plane, positioning the block horizontally across the liver. On the sagittal localizer, ensure coverage from the anterior abdominal wall to the erector spiny muscles posteriorly, with the midline running vertically through the liver. Adjust the field of view on the coronal plane. Ensure coverage of the liver. The patient is asked to hold their breath during image acquisition. The next sequence is a T2 Trufisp axial breath hold. Plan the slices on the acquired coronal image. It's important to plan on this sequence because during breath hold, the diaphragm exerts downward pressure on the liver, leading to a shift in the liver's position from the initial localizer scans. The slices must be sufficient to cover the liver from the diaphragm down to the C-loop of the duodenum, which is the insertion of the CBD at the umpala of Vata. Center the positioning block in the axial plane and check in the sagittal plane. The patient is asked to hold their breath during image acquisition. The next sequence is a T2 haste FATSAT coronal sequence. The positioning block is again placed so that the coverage is from the anterior abdominal wall to the posterior erector spiny muscles. Adjust the angle of the field of view on the coronal plane. For these sequences, we must plan using the non-breath hold localizer sequences, because these are non-breath hold acquisitions. Ensure coverage of the liver. Plan the navigator according to the scout type setup. If the scout type is a liver dome navigator, place it on the highest point of the liver with its center on the diaphragm, ensuring half the navigator is within the liver and half within the lung. If the navigator is a phase scout navigator, place it entirely within the liver. Check this in all three planes and apply. Now let's plan the T2 haste FATSAT axial sequence. Again, ensure coverage of the proximal duodenum inferiorly and the liver superiorly.
For ease, we can copy the position of the navigator from the previous planning. Adjust in all three planes and apply. While the triggered scans are running, we can track the breathing pattern of the patients. The scanner acquires images at the same point of the respiratory cycle. Next, we have a T2 haste coronal radial breath hold sequence. This acquires multiple images to capture different angles of the CBD. It can be used as a guide to plan the subsequent image if needed. Plan the coronal radial thick slab slices on the egg seal images, centering on the CBD. The CBD can be found by locating a bright spot and following it through to the pancreatic duct on one side and the hepatic duct on the other. Adjust the centering on the coronal plane using a breath hold scan and apply. Last is the T2 space sequence, which is a 3D scan. This scan is triggered, so be sure to plan it on the triggered coronal images that you've already acquired. Here is the common bile duct entering the sea loop of the duodenum. This is the bile duct from the gallbladder. And these are the hepatic ducts that drain the liver. This navigator is a liver dome scout, so place half of the navigator in the lungs and half in the liver on the dome of the diaphragm. When planning, we should wait for the T2 haste axial sequence. On this sequence, identify the CBD running into the liver and the insertion into the duodenum. Then trace it back up running into the pancreas. Angle to ensure coverage of the entire biliary system. Here we're checking the multi-angle single shot acquisitions. Again, on these triggers we can trace the patient's respiration ensuring correct placement of the navigator for accurate and consistent image acquisition. Typically, images are acquired during expiration. Now here is the acquired 3D image. As you can see, this sequence provides a very bright and clear visualization of the biliary system. You should review your images during the course of the scan. Check for inclusion of the relevant anatomy along with satisfactory image quality. Here we want clear visualisation of the biliary system in all the obtained images. You can further post-process the 3D image if your scanner does not perform this automatically. This is how to carry this out on a Siemens platform. Select the raw data 
and select Radial Images. Select Long Axis and bring in the borders to magnify the image. Window to your preferred level, Centre, check and save if required.